So today we're unwrapping the start of another new project here. This should be a Fluke 8060A multimeter, which is an older design, but it's known among the audio community to be especially useful because it has a relative decibel capability as well as a built-in frequency counter capability. So we're going to open this up and uh, see what we got. Well, I hate peanuts, but here we go. Interesting. So, no chip. Missing parts. Well, that was not declared as part of the eBay auction. So, uh, this should be an interesting conversation. So, we have the meter here. Uh, these uh, LCD displays are known for having problems. If you look in the uh, bottom left-hand corner there, there's the start of a, oh, there's some kind of a technical name for it. I refer to it as bleeding usually. And uh, definitely bleeding starting there. This is a known problem in this model in particular, like I said. So we'll have to see exactly how bad it is. But we'll see, considering they said it's missing parts. Everything outside looks to be present here. Um... Looks like it's had a hard life, but it's mostly there. Uh, the uh, battery door is missing. That was that was declared in the auction listing. The seller who sold this had about ten different meters identical for sale, and none of them had the battery door. So, what I'm afraid of here is that somebody was in the business of fixing these, and what I have ended up with is one of an assortment of uh, parts machines that the individual had hanging around. So let's get the cover off of it. I've got the screws out of it and we'll pop the cover off. I haven't had this apart before so you're learning at the same pace I am. is difficult to do one-handed. Time to buy a better camera rig, I believe. So. And we can see that that LCD bleed is much worse. It's, in fact, that whole side here. And let's see what they meant by no chip. Well, looks like the chip sits behind the LCD. That LCD mount is broken out there as it is on this side. So, all right, I'm gonna get those two screws out so we can slide the LCD off and uh, see what's behind it. These are the two screws that were holding the LCD assembly in place. Uh, I believe the one on the right is what is supposed to be there. The one on the left looks like a hardware store special of the wrong size and type. And there's the LCD off of there. And uh, we definitely are missing the chip. Which, um, there is... The, the chip that belongs in there, I don't know the part number off the top of my head. I'll have to get in the manual. But uh, it's a chip that was uh, custom made for Fluke by, I believe, Intersil. I could be wrong on that, but there's an um, interesting discussion over on the EEV blog forums from the guy who actually designed this meter and uh, pointed out that the uh, Fluke had a relationship with another company that manufactured the chip for them, and at some point that company released their own version 
of the same chip and it became a standard product but the bottom line is is that if I can't find the custom fluke chip that that uh, company's later commercial product is available and will work in this meter at the expense of I believe it's the lowest voltage range the uh, I believe that's a 200 millivolt range well part of the reason why I got this meter was to use the lower ranges and in audio applications so I'll be very disappointed about that um, I think at this point what I really need to do is uh, contact the eBay seller check my own notes I uh, may be making a mistake here but the uh, individual selling this on eBay identified 10 I believe or more meters numbered 1 through 10 and I think the one, th I thought the one that I bid on has a different number than the number that is written here on the bag. I could be wrong on that. I'll go check my notes and I'm going to see what the seller would like to do about this because I'm not happy. And to clarify, yes, I did buy this as parts or repair or not working. However, nothing in the auction description indicated incomplete or had been messed with or parts been robbed by somebody else and uh, that's a huge distinction well it's a good thing I checked my notes before I flew off at the eBay seller as it turns out the mistake well the big mistake is mine the uh, listing I had intended to bid on was one of the 10 meters that the same individual was selling and I bid on a different one and I won and paid for and I've taken apart a different one. So the one that, uh, the listing for the one that I actually won does specify that no sh no chip was included. So, yeah, kind of sucks. So I still want to get a working Fluke 8060A, so I'm going to have to uh, come up with another one here. There's a couple of couple of big questions here. I'm going to take it apart and look at the board a little bit more. And there are a couple of the missing chip, uh, what Fluke calls the MAC or measurement acquisition chip, which is U3 on the board, or the empty socket right here. And uh, I'm going to have to go from there, see what happens. But uh, as of the moment, the some of the chips are available on eBay that... Um, for about twenty dollars, that uh, intercell chip that I mentioned was a eighty plus percent replacement for the fluke chip it is still available, brand new from Digikey for about ten bucks. And uh, you know that, that's about where we're at right now. As of the moment, there's a couple more of these meters on eBay including a couple from the same seller still, including the one that I actually intended to bid on, has been relisted. And uh, they're cheaper than replacing the genuine Fluke chip at the moment. So I'll probably try to uh, bid on a couple of those and uh, see if between several units I can get one good working unit. Um, I'm fully expecting problems with the display. Like I said, the displays on this are known for issues. And... Uh, there's a uh, mod that's documented by uh, somebody on the EV blog forums that made up a whole replacement uh, PCB, turning this into an LED display. And that is certainly an option. I'd rather not, but we'll see what happens. And uh, I guess that's all I've got for now. And uh, I'll see you guys, well, on this subject anyway, when I get another meter. And I did go and pop that cover off of the uh, analog section here and uh, can learn a couple of useful things. And the big one is you can see that this is a uh, early model or earlier model because uh, the um, IC that I'm centering on there is a custom made uh, true RMS converter made for Fluke. So that, that identifies it as an earlier model. Uh, later models were retrofitted with a sub-assembly, I believe a sub-PCB, 
to use an off-the-shelf RMS converter. And we can see this is an early one. We can also tell that by the fact that the top voltage range goes to 1,000 volts DC. So, another interesting note here is that, flipping the board over, it's, um, these meters have a known electrolytic cap issue, as does most things these, uh, well, this age. The uh, board layout, at least, is copyrighted 1981, according to that mark. But uh, you can see fresh solder evidence there, and that fresh solder evidence is every electrolytic cap has been replaced. So, I'm not sure who to blame here, whether it's the eBay seller, or if he just got this as a lot of junk from somebody else and decided to sell it. I mean, the price is fair. I'm not... It's not like he tried to sell these units as working. But um, what this looks like to me is that somebody was trying to fix, had a production line, if you will, set up to fix these. And he's definitely recapped them. And uh, ones that failed that test or didn't have enough of the fluke chips to go around, for example, got sold off. So... Again, a little bit annoying, but, you know, when you pay for parts and repair on eBay, sometimes this is what you get. So I'm going to put this aside for now and, uh, like I said, continue to try to win another auction.